Kenshka. I'm from the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center. And uh, one of the few times where we are not at the Graduate Center CUNY in New York City, but we are in uh, Guadeloupe at the moment. And we are in the cultural center, uh, Sonis, uh, here um, on the island uh, in Bastère, if I uh, understand that right. And we are here with everybody to talk about our work and our book that we put together. It's called uh, New Place from the Caribbean. It's a very important book for us. It's one of the most significant and energizing projects we have ever done, I think, in the history of the Siegel uh, Theater. Um, we had uh, playwrights from Haiti, Martinique, and Guadeloupe coming to New York City. It was our last event, our last big event, actually, before the time of Corona. After that, we had one talk and everything had to shut down. And as everybody in the world, we are catching up. And tonight, it, or today, uh, we are talking about the experience um, of this project, about writing for the theater and for performance uh, here in the uh, Caribbean. And with us, we have uh, playwrights, uh, we have producers um, and uh, arts managers. So I welcome Eddie, who is working here at the center, Elvia, who runs the company, uh, Sija, Siage, um, Guy Regis uh, from a uh, playwright from Haiti who was in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Paris, uh, the great Stephanie Berat, who initiated the project together with us, uh, Danieli, who is with us uh, from Martinique, uh, Gael, Octavia, Magali, and Charlotte. So um, it's a really a fantastic uh, a, a little impression from the work we have been uh, doing. And um, to start the project off, I would like to give the word to Eddie Comper, who uh, runs the center here, uh, the cultural center, uh, Sonis. Eddie, tell us a little bit, where are we here? We are in Guadeloupe, the French West Indies, uh, and uh, at Sonis. Sonis is uh, one of um, is local, local, located in Abim. Abim is a heart. I think the heart of Guadeloupe because I believe it's the middle of the Guadeloupe. And so is uh, an, an equipment uh, from the um, agglomération uh, Cap Excellence. It's three town, Abim, Pointe-à-Pé, Pointe -à -Pointe, the cap, uh, commercial center in Guadeloupe, and Bemao, that it's uh, the industrial center. So it's an uh, equipment who do, um, who study dance, music, and theater. And uh, we, we, we do show because we have a, a place of 250 people who can make show. And uh, uh, it's a place who, who you can learn, they teach, and uh, you can uh, performing on the stage because we have a stage. I'm the director, Sonis is uh, um, 34, 34 uh, professor dance, music, and, and theater. And uh, administrative, we have about 20 people. That's uh, one of the main good place in Guadeloupe. I invite everybody who's of course Guadeloupe to come and see us and performing in our stage. Fantastic, yeah. We're gonna talk with you again next Friday when we talk about a play. And um, we did hear the a tale of black histories um, um, Elvia, you are uh, uh, the leader or you run the company Siage. Tell us a little bit uh, how you are connected uh, to uh, Sonis and about the project. Well, um, thank you for this opportunity. Well, actually, we've been working with Eddie Comper since a long time ago. We had the, the past last production that was co produced by Eddie Comper, the Centre Culturel Sonis and with the National National School of Art in, in Korea. So now we are continuing with the other projects, with the, this exciting project of ACT about, well, you, we're gonna talk about it later, how we're gonna bring this project of ACT here in Guadalupe. And so, um, and also we are also, we have this other project of uh, going on, uh, story of black history. So uh, that is gonna be presented very soon. And so far, well, just to the, the company uh, was created in 2002 and is co-directed by Gilbert Lemore. And so it's a Caribbean company uh, inspired by the, in all the productions by this popular tradition and multi, multi, multidisciplinarity, whether music, dance, theater, storytelling, and the trail. Fantastic. Um, again, you know, 
we're going to talk about the project that we did in New York, where we had six readings with six directors, New York actors putting together those plays. And we at the Siegel Center feel it is of utmost importance to listen to voices from the Caribbean. Um, interestingly enough, the largest group of immigrants in New York City, in city of about 12, 13 million people is not Asian American, African American or Latino American. The largest group is actually Caribbean, you know, uh, uh, artists and people, workers from, uh, from Haiti, uh, Cuba, uh, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, all the countries. And we feel it is important that what we see on stages represents the makeup of a city, the stories of the people, and we don't really see them. Um, Interestingly enough, if we understand right, the first time ever even French speaking playwrights from the Caribbean were to present it together in one festival in the history of theater was at our Siegel Theater Center. And I would now like to ask uh, Stephanie Berra, who is uh, joining us from Paris, a professor of theater who uh, initiated with us the program. Stephanie, why do you put your life's work? Why did you focus um, on theater of the Caribbean and tell us a little bit about the project? Well, thank you, Frank, for uh, inviting me and uh, for uh, making it possible uh, to have ACT taking place in New York. Um, I've been working on Caribbean theater for, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years now, more than 20 years. I did my PhD um, on the theater from Guadeloupe and Martinique, written in Creole and French. And I had the pleasure to live in um, in Guadeloupe for many years and uh, establish connection with uh, with the playwrights, with the companies. That's how I met Sillage when I was doing my field work for my PhD. And since then, we have been uh, working together with the company Sillage uh, to bring Caribbean theater in the United States, where I was uh, teaching for uh, many, many years. Um, they came to Maine with a play uh, by Marie Condé. Um, they came to uh, Charlottesville also in Virginia. And uh, we've been working with, uh, with Elvia to promote Caribbean theater outside of the Caribbean perimeter and not only in connection with uh, metropolitan France. And uh, every time uh, we've, we were facing the same issue as to the language, you know, uh, they came uh, to the United States and performed in French and in Creole with English subtitles. And what we were thinking of is that translation is a good way, a good tool to make this theater accessible uh, to uh, to um, to an uh, outside audience, you know. So I had been working with you, Frank, on two projects at the Martin Siegel Theater, and I came, you know, it was in 2017, if I remember well, and we talked about how it would be possible to have, you know, these plays from the Francophone Caribbean translated into English, and you opened the doors. And we built, you know, a team of uh, readers to select six plays. You know, there was a pool of 25 plays, I think. And we we selected six plays, two from Guadeloupe, two from Martinique, two from Haiti. The point was to promote not only um, established writers, playwrights, but also a new generation and to have a parity between female writers and, um, and male writers and uh, to have also contemporary um, themes, topics that could connect the Caribbean world with the American world. So I think, you know, we, we, we managed to put together uh, with your help and with Martin Siegel and the uh, embassy, the French embassy, uh, a pool of writer, uh, translators uh, and also directors from New York and actors who were able to to make uh, to make it alive on stage and have I uh, have the playwrights come to New York in 2019 just before the COVID, so we were lucky enough. We didn't know at that time that all the doors would be closed, and um, that was a great great uh, adventure. So I'm happy now to um, to have the playwrights talk about this experience. And Guy, don't worry. Guy, ne t'inquiète pas. Hein. On peut, euh, bien entendu, t'aider pour la traduction. Et quiconque a besoin de traducteur, on est là. Hein. We are here to help you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Stephanie. It was, a, I think, a great electrifying experience, actually. Lots of audiences with, you know, uh, people working with us, a big team. And uh, uh, I thought and felt it was uh, something very, very meaningful. 
Um, but let's turn now to the playwrights and um, you could perhaps talk, talk a little bit about you, your work, where you come from. But also we are interested, not just about the play, so, uh, but also how are you now? How is writing for the theater in the moment? How do you feel um, in this time um, of Corona? We, I spoke with some of you also with our Siegel Talks in between, but uh, maybe uh, Daniele, we start with you. Um, how, um, how are you now? Uh, how, is, how is your work going? What do you remember from New York? Did it have an impact on you? <laughs> uh i'm fine i'm fine i'm still writing and i was um and i i remember new york as a moment like a, a dream i don't know it was just uh, um crazy for me that a play that i, I wrote in martinique uh about uh, um a, a character like la diablesse who is a character from our imaginary caribbean imaginary uh, uh, would be would be presented and and translated and presented in New York. It was just uh, very interesting for me because it was a moment uh, of um, of um, meeting meeting also the Caribbean in New York and and to see that uh, for them too this character was uh, was uh, something big and interesting and. Um, for me, it was very, um, on dit, encourageant. Mm -hmm. encouraging, 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 encouraging. Oui. Way um, that my 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 playwright move uh, move to New York and uh, and open itself to to the others. It was very really good for me. And uh, since since New York. Uh, I was uh, hoping to go back to New York, Frank, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to theater, but the COVID came and uh, it was um, um, a moment uh, of writing for me. I, I wrote another another play, uh, playwright, uh, in another experience of playwright, more familial, more uh, about a, a familial and historic, the, the, the link between Historic, historical um, violence and family violence now, now, now in Martinique or in Guadeloupe. Uh, because for me, there is a link be, 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 uh, between uh, historic violence and, histor uh, and violence today in families and intimacy. Thank you. And, um, and by now, I'm writing a, a little play for the Avignon uh, Festival. Uh, this year because they they asked me to write a little play about 30 minutes to present uh, to present in the in the festival fantastic very good Guy, um regis uh, we can come to you i think you're still on mute yes you're on um you travel all around the world you're very established uh, 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 artist from the caribbean what did this festival mean to you what did you observe or learn or what did you take with you and uh, what are you working on now? J'attends la traduction. Vous êtes un auteur très établi, très reconnu. Qu'a qu signifié pour vous cette expérience de, euh, du projet ACT, Action Caribbean Théâtrale, d'avoir euh, une de vos pièces traduite en anglais et publiée donc, dans, dans un recueil euh, Qu'a signifié pour vous cette expérience et sur quoi travaillez-vous euh, aujourd'hui Um, c'est une très belle expérience parce que je suis encore en contact avec Canesa qui m'a demandé euh, euh, de, de, de lui écrire un, un texte sur la migration une sorte de commande où j'étais libre donc je, je lui ai envoyé et euh, bon y a, y il avait, y avait bien sûr cette présence à New York la, la lecture à New York, cette rencontre avec avec elle et aussi la même traductrice que j'avais avant pour le père c'est Judith Miller qui maintenant est à la retraite donc c'était vraiment un concours de circonstances extraordinaires et là je vais travailler sur un texte un long projet très long à Bordeaux je pars en résidence demain à Bordeaux pour travailler sur euh, 
la Bible du déboulonnement, qui est un long texte avec euh, des personnages de la ville qui interviennent sur cette question de, de monuments dans l'espace public. Et j'ai envie que ce soit un projet euh, qui se passe dans l'espace public. Et donc, de travailler avec Kanesa sur la, la performance euh, en espace public. Et puis, à l'intérieur, il se passe aussi d'autres choses. Donc, c'est un... C'est comme beaucoup de mes projets un peu impossibles à atteindre parce que j'aimerais faire intervenir 250 personnages euh, à la taille de la ville de Bordeaux parce que Bordeaux, c'est 250 000. Euh, euh, Let's, translate. Let's translate for a moment. Ouais. Et donc, euh, voilà, c'est sur ça que je travaille en ce moment. OK, so uh, Guy just said that it was um, an amazing experience, very enriching. He's still in connection with the director who, uh, who staged, you know, the, his play, um, De Toute la Terre, Le Grand Tefa, mm -hmm. Camisa Chao, and um, they, they are still working on new projects together. Uh, he was also very pleased to have Judith Miller as a translator, she was a translator of one of his play, Le Père, The Father. She's now retired, and so he was happy that she could translate another play by him. Uh, he's currently working on a very large project in uh, Bordeaux, in France, about um, people in the city and um, how to place monuments in the public space and to, uh, to have performance, public performance, Uh, outside on the street uh, with more than 250 people. Uh, so that's a very um, ambitious project, Two, 250 people outside in the street of Bordeaux for a city uh, of 250,000 people. So it's, uh, as we know, Bordeaux is connected with a slave trade. So it's also very symbolic uh, to, have a, to have a play a uh, stage in Bordeaux by Guy Regis Junior. Uh, the, the new project is Bible du déboulonnement. And I must say that déboulonnement, I don't know how to translate it in English, how to deconstruct the Bible of deconstruction in a way. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, thank you, Gail. Um, tell us a little bit about you. <laughs> yes, hello. I think your internet is not working at the moment, Gail. We can't hear you. Uh, maybe first we go to uh, Magali and uh, Charlotte. Maybe uh, both of you. Uh, Gail, we cannot hear you. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend the. Oh. oh. We cannot hear you. Let's oh. make a break. Maybe it will get better. Oh. Let's start first with Magali and Charlotte. Yes. And we come we, back. You can't hear me at all? No. Oh, I, I will try without the... Yeah. Can you hear try me? to sign out and sign back in, please. And um, we go to Magali and Charlotte. Tell us a little bit where you are at the moment and what do you remember from uh, the time in New York? And you are mute? <laughs> Okay. Alors, euh, ben pour nous, euh, euh, les trois jours passés à New York euh, ont été euh, très riches du fait justement qu'on écoute aussi d'autres pièces, que notre pièce soit euh, entendue pour la première fois en anglais. Euh, on est toujours en lien avec euh, Florent Massé pour, euh, de Princeton pour voir qu'est-ce qu'on pourrait mettre en place avec lui euh, pour la suite, euh, peut-être pour euh, le jour où on tuer ou d'autres choses. Euh, notre pièce The Day by Father Kini s'est jouée à Avignon l'année dernière à la chapelle du Verbe incarné. Et, Let's translate euh, donc... first, um, or you speak English, yeah. Uh, Stephanie, on mute, you are mute. Yeah, it was Charlotte, so Charlotte, uh, so Magali, Magali just said that it was a wonderful experience to be in New York, uh, not only to have the opportunity to hear their play translated and uh, and stayed read in English, but also to um, to listen, to uh, have the opportunity to uh, to listen to other Caribbean plays, to meet other Caribbean playwrights. So this gathering, you know, of all Caribbean playwrights in New York was uh, a big uh, event for them. They are still connected uh, in relationship with uh, Florent Mass, 
uh, from uh, Princeton University who directed the play and are trying to have you know project future project with Princeton or with uh, with Florent Mas. Uh, their play, the play which was translated and stage played in New York, um, Le Jour où mon père m'a tué, was uh, performed in Avignon last year at the Chapelle du Verbe Incarné. Yeah. Et, euh, et grâce à Amelia Paranto, qui est notre traductrice de la pièce, euh, nous sommes en lien avec The Voyager Theatre Company, The Company, qui, avant le Covid, en fait, avait le projet de monter la pièce. Et pour l'instant, c'est en stand-by. Voilà. Il y a, et il y a eu une lecture organisée pendant le Covid, euh, une lecture et, avec, avec deux comédiennes, et en fait, une lecture en, en direct avec... Euh, euh, voilà, plein de gens qui se sont connectés à une certaine heure et voilà, une, une lecture euh, virtuelle de la pièce. So they, they are still, Magali and Charlotte are still um, in relationship with Amélie Parenteau, who was the translator of their play. Um, they, are, they have established connection also with the Voyage, Voyager, Voyage Theatre Company. Um, and um, they have the project to have their plays performed in the US. Before, before that, and during the time of COVID, um, there was a reading, an online reading um, of the play with American actors um, from this company, Voyage Theatre Company. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Et depuis, on a écrit... At the Avignon Festival, right, if I understand right? Yes. Yes, we made a, a, on, a, on a joué au Festival d'Avignon uh, au mois de juillet dernier. On était avec, avec le, le, the day my father killed me. Yeah. yeah, so this was before the C we had the Siegel event before and then it went to the Avignon Festival. I think we should come back later on your play because it showed the complexity and perhaps also failures, you know, how to start, how to direct something, how to do something right, how to honor the spirit of the play. And um, but um Gail, uh, can, can we try if we can hear you now? You you can hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, so, as I, I was trying to say, um, I uh, I couldn't attend the, the reading of the play uh, in, uh, it was when, it was in uh, uh, 20, uh, c'était quand déjà? C'était en 2019 déjà? <laughs> in New York. And um, it was very, um, Of, of course, I, I have a lot of regret not to 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 be able to come because uh, I saw the um, the video of the of the reading and it was really wonderful. But we 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 still had the I still I I, I kept the contact with uh, Lucy uh, Lucy Tibergien, who was uh, the the director of the play. And um, and there was a, another another time of reading of public reading of the play, and uh, so Lucy um, uh, continued to work on the play with her students and with her uh, with her team. Uh, in uh, and uh, and there was uh, another reading of the play in um, in Brooklyn in Prospect Park, uh, in the Moliere in the Park program with the uh, Molière plays and uh, contemporary plays, uh, something that Lucy de Bergen uh, uh, put together, uh, contemporary uh, theater with Molière's theater. It's a way to show how Molière is still uh, uh, very, uh, very contemporary in reality, <laughs> the, the theme. Are... So uh, this, um, this program act uh, really um, begin something Uh, begin a, 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 a really deep uh, contact and um, and um, share sharing of of uh, of work with Lucy and uh, and thinking about theater about the play and um, I hope that maybe uh, someday she will uh, make a, a real uh, production of it not only a reading but the the, the readings were uh, very Uh, but also, I couldn't attend it <laughs> yeah. because it was. Uh, yeah, hmm? there was a lot of energy in the room, a great interest. Uh, it, one could feel yes. something new emerging that hadn't been done, and also 
French Cultural Services, Nicole and Laurent really were helpful. Judith Miller was involved uh, uh, and so many. We also had, you know, dramaturgs working with us. Um, my question to all of you as playwrights, um, how, how does it feel at the moment, uh, in this moment in time, to be a playwright from the Caribbean and to write for theater and performance? What has changed since uh, 2019? It's incredible to think that 2019-20, when we did this, is almost three years ago, and we're only catching up now. But what has changed? Uh, how is writing for the theater as a Caribbean writer's for you, what does it mean for you at the moment? Is there a new awareness? And uh, it's open question. And uh, maybe just uh, Stephanie, you you translate it for uh, Charlotte, Magali, and Guy, so they hear it. Oui, donc Franck, Franck demande um, qu'est-ce qui a changé pour vous depuis 2019? Comment est-ce que vous vous positionnez aujourd'hui en tant que écrivain caribéen? Euh, voilà, qu'est-ce que qu -ce, qu -ce, ces trois années qui ont passé depuis le 19, depuis 2019 avant le Covid et maintenant trois ans plus tard, comment vous vous sentez en tant que en tant que dramaturge caribéen? Oui, Magali. Euh, le, le, le Covid a, a, a planté à un moment donné euh, les projets. Donc, ça, il a fallu ensuite repartir avec le projet en cours et les projets qui étaient derrière. Donc, au lieu de partir avec un seul projet, on est parti avec deux projets en route. Donc, ça a demandé énormément d'intensité de travail, et euh, aussi bien à tous les niveaux de production, de création. Et, euh, et on, a, on a bénéficié quand même... Euh, des plans de relance euh, au niveau des subventions et tout, qui nous ont permis de, de monter à bien euh, tous les projets. Et, euh, et aujourd'hui, on est pratiquement à, à jour euh, au niveau du, du, du planning euh, des deux, trois, deux prochaines années. So, Magali Solinia just said that the COVID just stopped all the projects. Um, so it was um, a time of um, a suspended time where they couldn't really achieve uh, and make possible the project they had. And uh, when things started again, they had to um, to lead not only one, but two, but several projects. So it was a very intensive time of uh, production, uh, of working. Um, fortunately, the French state uh, offered helps financial helps so that they could lead you know several projects and now they they have they are just you know um again running um their project and feeling back to uh to uh to a life of uh creativity and, and production maybe my situation is a little bit different from the others because i'm just a writer I think that all of you are also directors or actors. And uh, so maybe it didn't change a lot. Maybe it changed more things. The COVID, I, I mean, changed more things for the others. Because I'm, I'm always in this situation of waiting for somebody to take my, my plays and, and, and pro pro produce them because I don't do it myself. And um, of course, the, the, the COVID had an impact. For example, uh, another play I wrote after Family was Rhapsody, which made a, a tour in Africa and which was supposed to be uh, performed in Paris, but which couldn't be performed in Paris because of COVID in 2021. Uh, but uh, I think that it did maybe it didn't impact the pure question of writing things because I, 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 I continued to write to write plays after and uh, without knowing if if uh, it uh, it could be produced or performed. But it's 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 already like this for me, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Non, ce que j'ai trouvé euh, plus, plus euh, 
comme, comme un vrai élément euh, perturbateur dans, dans cette période Covid, c'est que comme le monde est devenu un petit village euh, à ce moment-là, euh, les pays comme Haïti sont, étaient bien plus fragiles encore, en fait. Pas à cause de la maladie, mais à cause du fait que c'est devenu plus difficile pour les Haïtiens de circuler dans le monde. On en a profité de la période Covid pour bien resserrer tous les, toutes les possibilités de, 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 de voyage, des visas. C'est beaucoup plus difficile de, de passer d'un pays à un autre. Ce qui fait que moi, en tant que, que créateur, c'est la première fois que je me suis posé la question impossible pour un Haïtien de se naturaliser. En tout cas, c'est pour moi. Euh, et, et, et ça allait encore. J'ai raté, par exemple, euh, une année de, 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 de travail au Canada parce qu'ils ont pris énormément de temps pour, pour me donner le visa. Pendant un an, ils n'ont pas donné. J'ai eu mon visa que maintenant. Ils ont repoussé pour 2025. Ça n'a jamais été aussi dur pour les Haïtiens de voyager. Je suppose que ça doit l'être tout autant pour d'autres pays. Euh, voilà. Euh, c'est... Translate, maybe, a little bit. Wait, hold the start and we come back. Mm. Uh, so, Kiriji Junior just said that um, the COVID was a uh, huge, um, had a huge effect on, um, on the whole world. You know that for the world that the world became a little village as he said and for precarious uh, nations such as haiti uh, they became even more fragile uh, because it was more and more difficult to um to travel around the world and uh, the conditions for haitian people to um to visit other countries was uh, highly highly restricted in terms of uh, visa Uh, himself as a creator, as a playwright, as an artist, a writer, he started to think about uh, taking another nationality, another citizenship, what he didn't consider before. He took the example of Canada. He was invited to spend one year in Canada, and they took so many time um, to make the decision to uh, allow, uh, to give him the visa, that it had to be postponed for 2025. Donc, ils ont profité de ce moment de fermeture des frontières pour euh, encore endurcir tout, 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 toutes les lois, en fait, de, 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 euh, et, euh, et, bah, et ça l'est encore aujourd'hui, hein, euh, même s'il y a une, une sorte d'ouverture. Je ne sais pas si vous vous souvenez, les États-Unis s'est fermé longtemps même avec Biden, c'était encore fermé. <rire> Vous n'imaginez pas la circulation d'un artiste haïtien. Et en plus, la, avec la situation actuelle, ça, donc les haïtiens voyagent, on partent, ne voyagent pas, partent encore, encore plus. Et donc, c'est une situation bien compliquée. Euh, euh, de ce côté-là, en tout cas. Après, moi, je ne suis pas à plaindre du tout parce que, bon, j'ai pu faire mes créations, euh, euh, les deux créations, justement, comme Magali le disait tout à l'heure. Donc, il y a un bouteillage, j'ai dû faire deux créations dans la même année. Les cinq fois où j'ai vu mon père, la montée une cathédrale en Soveli parce que c'était l'embouteillage. Mais avant, on va dire que c'est super d'avoir fait deux spectacles dans la même année. Mais il, il reste une chose qui est indéniable pour moi, c'est que je, je, je veux pouvoir circuler, je ne veux pas rester, rester nécessairement en France pour faire mes créations. J'aime autant faire ma création en Haïti ou, ou au Canada ou ailleurs. C'est ça qui est en tout cas le plus compliqué. So, um, he explained that, in fact, they, they took, you know, in a way, the excuse of closing down the... Uh, the borders um, to make it even more difficult. Um, Stephanie, at the moment, we cannot hear you. Uh, so maybe you also uh, can you Can you hear me now? Yes. 
So no, teacher... maybe sign back in again, and then you translate. Um, sign out and sign back in. It's um, who knows why. I'm not sure why. But if you can, can you hear me? Yeah, it's not working. Not working at all. Try to oh. sign back in. And let's ask maybe Eddie and Elvia um, to, to touch on something. No. Um, try to sign back in, uh, please. Um, Elvia and Eddie, um, what we heard a little bit from the complications, you both present Caribbean artists in Caribbean world uh, in Guadeloupe. Uh, Eddie, you are also a music producer and uh, creatures. But how is the connection to the world? How difficult is it or how easy is it? How is the respect? How are invitations? How are you connected um, to the outside world? Elvia, maybe you can start. Um, uh, Guy, tu, tu, tu m'entends? Guy, est-ce que tu, tu, tu entends? En fait, en fait comment, comment les connexions se font, se font avec le, le monde? Allô? Mm -hmm. I think he's. Non, soft. mais je suis là, je change de place, mais ma, ma fille qui a ouvert sa chambre. <laughs> Mm. Oui, allons-y. Ah, Stéphanie, she came back. She came back, I think, Stéphanie. I think Stéphanie is back. Let's see she's back and she can translate uh, the answer. Um, you want me to translate what Guy said? Yes, please, say again. So uh, Guy, Guy Regis Junior just said that um, the sanitary um, protection measures that were taken, you know, for all the people uh, in the world during the time of COVID were made an effect on how difficult it became for Haitian people to get out of the country. Even with Biden, you know, it was really impossible for Haitian people to get out of Haiti. Um, the situation, the current situation, economical, political uh, turmoil make it you know, people, Haitian people want to get out of Haiti, so the restriction and the protection of borders are even stronger. Um, he said that um, for himself, he cannot really complain because as an established playwright, he's allowed to travel uh, and he was able to produce two, uh, two plays, you know, in one year after the COVID. Um, but he wants he wants to be able to travel around the world and to be able to create his place not only in France but in Haiti and uh, and outside. So the freedom to to travel and produce everywhere is kind of threatened by um, by the closing of borders. Yeah, yeah, it's a very difficult situation always, but now especially for Haiti, uh, it is. Um, it is so complicated. Um, Elvia, can you hear us? Uh, sometimes it's, it's cutting a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us a little bit. You also present Caribbean work, especially theater. You normally also try to connect to France, but the world is bigger. How is it? How easy is it to connect Caribbean work uh, to the world, uh, to the global world? Uh -huh. Well, in a way, <laughs> I would say that you really have to be stubborn in order to be able to, to to succeed because the connections in in the in the Caribbean are are quite difficult it's much easier to go to Paris or to go to the US to travel among the islands so we really have to have like a, a, a spirit a militant spirit to go to really be able to make all these connections but I think that the spirit is is, is strong enough and it's uh, because it's well, it comes from all the diaspora and this necessity to be to be connected and to be to keep this spirit alive that's <laughs> connected with the with the well with the mother earth yeah so um but uh, we I mean, we've been very privileged to work with 
Cuba with Eugenio Hernandez Espinosa. We also we have uh, several projects also with uh, in in Haiti, and uh, in that also allowed us to go really beyond and also to be uh, somehow repéré. Um, que tu peux dire repéré, Stephanie? To be noticed, to even be noticed by another another continent that we never imagined that we would work like for. Korea, the, 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 the National uh, University of Korea that offered uh, Gilbert the possibility to, to teach his vision of a Caribbean theater. And from that, we were able to build another production with, with this institution and con in connection with uh, Eddie Comper, donc, uh, le, 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 comment dirais-je, le, um, donc, Sonis, le Centre Culturel Sonis et Cap Excellence. Uh, so, and how are the connections to France and to Canada, French-speaking countries, or Belgium? Is there an interest in the work of Caribbean? Uh, well, actually, I realized, I, because I lived in Paris for 16 years, and, uh, uh, and I realized how difficult it is when I came to live in, in Guadeloupe. And when the company, well, the company was uh, created in 2002, so it, and it was, it had a label, this national label of uh, uh, Compagnie Conventionnée. So I thought it was going to be very, very, very easy and smooth to travel all around the world. I mean, it, because of course we were, uh, we have this ambition as a, as a young company in 2002. And actually when I, when I had a meeting with, to introduce the company to uh, l'Institut Français, uh, so I really realized how difficult it was uh, to to this. I mean, the doors when I used to work in Paris and, and it made connections with the Latin American companies, and so they were really open, even if they didn't know what was the background of the directors. And we were a Guadalupean company uh, with a label of national label of uh, the Ministry of Culture, where, but we didn't have this opportunity. So I'd really, to really be able to make connections with the US, I had to, to myself just call and call the, 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 the um, I mean, the French services to just to, to introduce the company. And then from there, we really, so the starting point was in San Francisco. And then uh, the, um, um, the, the actually the uh, uh, the cultural the cultural um, attaché from the uh, French Council in in San Francisco. So he the following day I call him. He just received us with the whole team, and he told me, "Well, Elvia, if you want if you want to to really build a project, go to New York and uh, in in Chicago." And then from there, so I, thanks to this connection, I was able to build a project with Marie Condé, and it, end, it ended up to be a, um, a tour in, in five states in the U.S. and with Marie Condé and giving also lectures in, in links with uh, with the um, uh, French uh, French um, um, I mean with the French embassy, with the, 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 the network of uh, US um, um, universities and well, <laughs> and yeah, so on. So it's not easy, it's not easy. I no, know no, when no, I no, 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 some, some people, French people also, you know, um, or artists, they say, oh, I don't know that. Are there playwrights in the Caribbean? I, I haven't heard of it. And um, it is a bit shocking um, and actually um, the, the attitude. And we all need to listen to these stories, you know, also what we can learn from uh, the Caribbean experience, from the way they are connected to natures, to the ancestors, to, to the ghosts, to um, the spiritual, all that we talk about in the new time we live now in the Anthropocene, we say we live entering a new world where we have to completely resync to survive as mankind. And I think there's a lot uh, we can learn and understand from an experience of uh, Caribbean um, um, nations, artists, uh, and um, people. Um, my, my question again to everybody, all the writers, um, um, do you feel uh, more politicized? Do you feel more, uh, more anger? Do you feel more courage? How is the experience for you um, 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 to write uh, as uh, what is now in some way also a minority language, French, but also in a minority within the French uh, uh, writing and French cultures. 
if you could translate uh, a bit, um, Stephanie. Uh, donc, comment vous vous sentez aujourd'hui? Est-ce que vous êtes plus uh, engagé politiquement uh, dans vos œuvres? Est-ce que vous sentez une colère particulière qui, uh, qui va s'exprimer théâtralement? Est-ce que uh, vous ressentez d'être encore aujourd'hui une minorité uh, à l'intérieur de la culture française en tant qu'écrivain uh, uh, de la Je peux répondre en français Ça sera plus facile. Euh, je dirais que oui, c'est-à-dire que euh, en tant qu'autrice, mais en tant qu'artiste, je suis également comédienne et metteuse en scène, euh, donc euh, je produis des projets. Je sens en effet que c'est très difficile, comme disait Elvia, d'entrer sur le marché hexagonal français national français quand on vient de la Caraïbe. Il y a à la fois parfois des ouvertures <rire> et de la curiosité, mais bien souvent de la fermeture, je trouve. Encore, je te laisse traduire. Um, so Daniel Francis, just say that uh, as a playwright, as an actress, as a director, Uh, she produces a lot of um, projects, you know, theater projects, and uh, she finds it really, really difficult to uh, open up to um, um, French hexagonal, you know, metropolitan France uh, stage, that there is a kind of curiosity um, from the part of the French producers, but also a lot of um, uh, narrow mindedness that people tend to uh, have uh, a reducted, a limited uh, perspective, you know, closing what Caribbean means. So mm. it's really challenging for her to have her place produced, even if now she's been invited to the Avignon Festival and the, uh, the program in, you know, the festival, yeah. mm. of, you know, the biggest, uh, very prestigious uh, Festival d'Avignon. Et justement, ça m'arrive plus souvent de jouer et de présenter, de faire circuler mes œuvres écrites ou jouer à l'étranger qu'en France, plus souvent. Euh, être au Festival d'Avignon in, eh c'est presque un acte politique pour moi. Finalement, la résonance, elle est politique. C'est-à-dire que lorsque je suis invitée au Festival in d'Avignon, qu'est-ce que je veux dire Qu'est-ce que je vais dire c'est important pour moi d'y apporter une parole euh, authentique. Je, me, je, je pourrais euh, me positionner comme une artiste tout court, mais je ne peux que me positionner comme une artiste de la Caraïbe et de la Caraïbe francophone et de la, et de la Martinique en particulier, parce que je crois qu'il y a encore euh, un regard colonial sur nous. Il y a encore ce regard colonial. On attend de nous un certain discours, on attend de nous une certaine place et je crois qu'il faut y aller un peu avec de la dynamite, <rire> il faut y aller euh, avec un esprit, de, un esprit de, de rébellion dans cet établishment, il faut y aller avec une, euh, un esprit rebelle. Stephanie Danieli, Danieli just said that it's easier for her to uh, perform uh, abroad, you know, in foreign countries than to uh, to be invited in uh, in France. So the opportunity to have the possibility to uh, to uh, present a text, to stage a text in the Avignon Festival is kind of a political has a political dimension, and she's. Um, she feels that she has to bring a, a sincere, authentic um, work so that she can, in a way, embody not only, you know, female artists, but also an artist coming from the Caribbean and coming from Ma Martinique. Uh, she still believes that um, French, metropolitan French has uh, uh, tend to have, uh, a, colon, a 
neo-colonial or colonial uh, gaze on, uh, on what is produced, what is coming from the Caribbean. So she wants to, um, to make all the um, cliche, all the stereotypes, you know, explode in a way and um, to, uh, to go there with a spirit of resistance, of rebellion against the establishment. Avec la paix, hein? <laughs> c'est-à-dire que in peace. être intègre, c'est rester intègre, rester intègre et aller intégralement, voilà. Remain true and sincere, but to, to go totally with it. Mais j'ai l'impression, avec cette question, je, je, pour finir, que mes, mes deux écrits, depuis, euh, depuis qu'on s'est rencontrés en 2019, oui, ils sont, ils sont, ils sont, ils sont, ils sont chargés d'un engagement politique. Oui, il y a un engagement politique dans ce que j'ai écrit depuis 2019. So maintenant, elle réalise avec cette question que depuis 2019, les deux textes qu'elle a écrits ont uh, une Political dimension, there are uh, militant texts and activists, yeah, and engaged political activism. Quels sont les stigmates du politique dans nos corps et dans nos espaces? C'est vraiment ce qui conduit ce que j'écris. What are, in the way, the, the political imprint, you know, um, that remain? Uh, that exploring her theatrical rights same question to everyone what's what has changed what what do you feel urgent what is important now to write about la même question la même question hein qu'est-ce qui est important quels sont les sujets qui sont brûlants aujourd'hui est-ce que voilà l'engagement politique est plus important aujourd'hui que euh, en 2019 la question est posée à tous C est, c est, je crois que c'est peut-être là où le, où, où le bas blesse, hein, ce que tu, tu viens de dire, Danieli, il y a, je me pose souvent dans le, dans le théâtre français cette question du propos. Et euh, quand je vais au Festival d'Avignon, par exemple, euh, euh, je ne peux pas ne pas aller euh, à la chapelle du Verbe incarné. Parce que j'ai l'impression que ce que je vais voir dans cet espace-là, il y a toujours un propos très fort, politique, important. Et dans le reste du théâtre français, on n'attend pas nécessairement ce discours-là. Euh, je suis désolé de le dire, mais de plus en plus, je me rends compte que c'est quand même un, un milieu extrêmement bourgeois. Il y a, il y a un entre-soi, dans, 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 déjà dans les équipes, euh, qui constitue les, les, toutes les directions des, des théâtres. Euh, Il y a très peu de diversité dans cet endroit. Il <rire> y en a de plus en plus par rapport, euh, par rapport à la place des femmes, mais il y en a très peu par rapport au reste du monde. Mais je pourrais dire que c'est vraiment l'image le, le, de la société française, en fait, qui est exactement pareil dans, dans, le, dans le théâtre. Et quand il y a une pièce qui marche très bien et qu'on me dit d'aller voir, j'attends un propos. Et en fait, euh, euh, c'est toujours mièvre, en fait. C'est toujours, euh, c est, c est toujours euh, nombriliste. Euh, J'ai été voir une pièce il n'y a pas longtemps, d'une jeune metteur en scène, où tout le monde parle et tout. J'arrive et je, je dis, bon, ça peut être intéressant, en fait, du début à la fin. Ce n'est pas que je m'emmerde, mais je me dis, mais ça dit quoi <rire> et, euh, et on est, on est comme des, des, des bulles, des espaces comme ça, des, des bulles où, 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 qui existent dans le monde avec euh, la Caraïbe, avec toute l'histoire. Euh, on n'arrivera pas à, avec. Euh, oh, s'il y a des bourgeois dans, dans la Caraïbe, mais je ne pense pas qu'ils écrivent des pièces, ce n'est pas leur milieu. <rire> let's, let's translate. Oui, vas-y. Okay, so um, what he is saying is that um, he agrees with Daniel Lee about um, the content of the play, what, what theater talks about, um, the political, social engagement. And uh, he says when he goes to the Chapelle du Verbe Incarné in Avignon, which is a, a specific theater to promote um, all, the, all the plays from the Outre-mer, 
uh, he says that it's different from what he sees in uh, other, you know, French um, theater. He think he believes that um, the French cultural milieu is highly bourgeois and self-centered that uh, people who direct theater, they know each other. So it's a kind of very small world uh, that there is no space for diversity, even if it's changing in the terms of um, making it possible for women to access, you know, certain um, positions. <inaudible> Um, he said that uh, this theatrical world, which is bourgeois and self-centered, is just a, uh, reflecting the French society uh, that is really um, highly non realist I don't know how to translate that, but to, to look at themselves, but not to be open to the world. And he went to see a, a play recently in Paris and just was wondering what does it tell us about the world? You know, and uh, he was not convinced that uh, every French place can have um, can make it possible to to think about what's happening in the world outside of France. Um, that is just making it limited to their own little little space and little issues. Moi, je pense qu'il y a un propos que qu'on n'a pas envie d'entendre dans ce pays euh, qui est quand même le pays qui, qui, qui utilise le déni le plus au monde. Il y a des sujets qu'on n'a pas envie d'entendre. En, Je vais prendre un, deux exemples qui sont pour moi <rire> symptomatiques de, de ce sujet-là. Euh, après, j'appelle souvent « after Floyd », après la mort de Floyd, il y a eu dans le monde quand même euh, euh, énormément de mouvements le racisme à propos des Noirs et tout ça. Dans, à la sortie littéraire d'après, il y avait un seul livre écrit sur le sujet en France. Et c'était un livre d'un Haïtien. Et, je, et, et c'est quand même très fort parce que je pensais que ça allait secouer l'Empire, moi, l'Empire français dans le monde, cette chose parce que ça concerne vraiment la France, mais en fait, ça a été très, très vite euh, balayé. Ou bien je vais au, au Thomas euh, il y a deux ans, c'est là que je vais voir une petite pièce euh, qui parle du, du nucléaire français, de tous les essais nucléaires qu'ils ont faits en Polynésie. Pas, les comédiens n'étaient pas magnifiques, mais pourquoi est-ce que j'entends jamais ce sujet-là dans le théâtre français Mm -hmm. C'est extrêmement étonnant. C'est yeah, des yeah. sujets vraiment importants, en fait. C'est très rare de, de voir ça. Voilà. Uh, so, Guy, Guy said that um, he thinks that French people do, don't, do not want to, um, to hear, to listen, you know, to be open to what's happening outside. He, he, he took two examples. One uh, that are very symptomatic of this um, narrow mindedness, and um, one is um, after the death of George Floyd. Uh, he said that all over the world there were movements against racism, and he just noticed that um, when all the books, you know, in the fall, when you have all the new books coming out, in France there was only one talking about this topic, and uh, it was one book written by, uh, by a Haitian. Uh, so he said that France just want to avoid to talk about uh, certain topics, and one of them is racism. Another example he took is he saw a, a small play two years ago, which addresses the um, uh, the topic of the nuclear essays in Polynesia, which um, you know is highly problematic, and that no playwrights uh, address you know this uh, this topic of. Uh, nuclear essays and um, and that was a play c'était une, une pièce écrite par uh, par qui that was a play written je, 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 je ne saurais le dire je me, je me souviens pas je, je me souviens pas mais c'était vraiment ah. une bonne compagnie 
C'est une compagnie euh... tahitienne. C'est une compagnie tahitienne ouais. qui avait okay. monté cette pièce. Nous, on a reçu okay. la sonnette. Et il was talking about uh, the, the problem of the nuclear in, uh, in the Ocean Indian and how the, the French government use uh, their power uh, to do bad things and have to, to put on the table and nobody know exactly what happened. But mm. this. Eddie, how is it for you? How do you feel as a presenter, someone who runs a cultural center, who gives space to artists, but you also, I know you work a lot with musicians. How do you feel? How is uh, the connection to the world from the Caribbean or Guadeloupe or Martinique? How do you feel? Uh, for us, it's very important to have a connection of, uh, over the world because uh, our market is small. In Guadeloupe, Martinique, when, when uh, uh, we, we we build uh, um, uh, uh, some 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 plays, and you 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 ought to play uh, outside. But I think I'm 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 so glad uh, that about your questions. But uh, I think we we ought to ask: Did the world with our story? give us opportunity to not be politics and to not be militants when we, we show about music, dance, and theater. That I think this question is very important because uh, uh, everybody said the same. When a, a small company in Guadeloupe or Martinique or French Guyana want to level First level, want to communicate with the neighbors in the Caribbean. We have plenty, plenty problems to connect, to have a visa, to have a plane who, who travel between the, all the Caribbean. Uh, you are French and they are English or Spanish. You are not independent, they are independent. Uh, you couldn't take the decisions in Guadeloupe. You need to go to Paris to take the decisions to, 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 to make the connection. You know, that's the first level. The so second level, New York, States, France, Europe, Africa, we got the same problems to travel and uh, uh, how, how they, they don't put you in a place only for the minority culture. You are not in the main stage. You are not in the main stage place because you are they consider the minority culture. And so behind this, how how do you do behind this? How 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 do you uh, um, fight for everybody? No. For one example. Kassav in music was full of Zenit without French media. Without French media. So now the, the, the things, how long we still to fight to say everybody recognize we have a universe culture. But <laughs> in, <laughs> in Sony, we fight. We fight over this. We give, we give chance, and our politic no uh, to help la compagnie siage to go to um, to go to Korea. So we pay, and we spend many money because for us it's in a politic action because to go outside the Guadeloupe because we need to looking for new market. And the, the world ought to be with us to know our culture. So we're still fighting on it and it's very important to fight on it. I wanted to add something about being a Caribbean writer in France. Uh, that is uh, linked to what uh, Daniel Lee and uh, and the others said. 
for example, the very last play I wrote is a comedy. And you know, in France, you have you have two systems. You have the private theaters and the public theaters, and it's two separated systems uh, with the, the public theaters uh, with a, or it's maybe a caricature, what I would say, but uh, it's very, um, uh, you, you can have conceptual and uh, experimental and uh, intellectual uh, theater. And the, what is considered like for the general public, it's the private theater with comedies, not only, but uh, or, or plays uh, performed by uh, movie stars, you know, uh, that so so actors people know very well because they come from the cinema, and and, and they are in the in the private theater. So uh, what I do is more for the public theater, <laughs> but the very last play I wrote is a comedy, and one of one of my friends uh, who is a, a quite famous a singer, but she was also an actress, but she's more known as a, as a singer. Uh, she 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 read it because she she she, she likes to, to to read what I I write, and and she was like oh, for the first time you wrote something that is really really for the general public, <laughs> and uh, and it's a comedy and 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 she told me oh I know the di director of the of a theater of a private theater. And uh, and she told me, oh, it's 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 a very good play for this kind of theater, private theater. Uh, so she gave, with my permission, she gave the text to this man who is directing this uh, private theater, and he wrote, he, he read the play, the play. So the play is a comedy, but it's uh, it takes place in Martinique, and it's about autonomy and independence of Martinique. So it's political. Uh, position. It's it's it, it's it's a uh, it's um, it, it's not because it's a comedy that it's not political. So he, he the, the guy uh, read the play and he said, "Oh, it's very good. It's very funny. It's hilarious. There is a good reason. It's perfect. But the problem is like it's that it takes place in Martinique, <laughs> and 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 he said that." Nobody in Paris, in his private Parisian theater, would be interesting in the play taking place in Martinique. And it was the only objection he had about this play. It's and it and to me it was crazy because it's either it's a good play, either it's a bad one. But uh, who cares if it takes, <laughs> it takes place in Martinique? And why would the Parisian? And and I think it's a prejudice you know, about the public, because I think that the general public is all, of course, uh, able and and ready to see a play taking place in Martinique. But it's uh, the people who decide which plays are supposed to be performed in which theaters. It's these people that think that a, a, poly, a, a, a play about autonomy of Martinique will not be interesting for the Parisian uh, public which is, I think, not true at all. But it's an example of the problem, <laughs> you know, we're talking about. Charlotte Magali, how is that all for you? Uh, on a le même, le même problème par rapport uh, aux pièces de théâtre qui se passent en Guadeloupe. <laughs> la Martinique, la Guadeloupe, c'est pareil. Et du coup, uh, c'est vrai qu'on réfléchit à se dire, mais en fait, uh, en quoi ça peut déranger le fait que ça se passe en Guadeloupe parce qu'en fait, on, on, les histoires sont universelles, au final, même si on pointe du doigt certains, euh, certains, ben, certains lieux, certains sujets qui sont euh, itinérants à, à la Guadeloupe ou à la Caraïbe, mais c'est universel et, ça permet, et souvent le public, quand on a joué au lavoir moderne parisien par exemple, eux nous disent qu'ils sont contents de le fait que ça se passe ailleurs, en fait, ça leur fait du bien parce que ça les déconnecte aussi encore plus de la réalité. Ils peuvent plus rentrer dans l'histoire. Et, euh, et effectivement... D'ailleurs, tu dis... Euh, et et d'ailleurs, du coup, je te coupe deux secondes, mais tu dis au, au tout début de la pièce, on a rajouté une sorte de, de prologue où, Ma, où Magali raconte dans quel contexte on a écrit la, la pièce toutes les deux, s'adresse au public et raconte ça et, euh, et dit à la fin de son texte, ça se passe en Guadeloupe, mais ça peut se passer n'importe où, en fait ça se passe en Guadeloupe, ça pourrait se passer à New York, ça peut se passer à... Enfin, voilà, finalement, on raconte euh, ce qu'on... 
Mon... Enfin, la, la, com la comédie humaine qu'on raconte, euh, peut, cette comédie humaine pourrait se passer n'importe où, en fait. Et c'est drôle, c'est effectivement un reproche qu'on nous a fait, euh, euh, un reproche, pas un théâtre qui ne voulait pas nous prendre parce que ça se passe en Guadeloupe. Et pour moi, c'est pire que ça, c'est-à-dire que si on faisait une pièce qui se passe sur la Lune ou sur la planète Mars ou sur Pluton, il n'y aurait pas d'objection. Yeah, let's first translate. <rire> Um, Magali, Magali just said that they are facing the same problem as um, as what Gael was talking about. That you know, a play which takes place, the plot takes place in Martinique and Guadeloupe. How can it be of interest, you know, for a French audience? So they still have to face this issue of um, making it possible to uh, to perform a play. Uh, about Guadeloupe or about Martinique in a Parisian theater. And the point, the fact is that when people come and see their play, that was a point in the La Voix Moderne Parisien, a, a small theater in, um, in uh, Paris. Uh, the audience was perfectly fine with, uh, with the fact that it was taking place in Guadeloupe. And in fact, it could, it could take place anywhere, you know, um, not only Martinique, Guadeloupe, or anywhere in the world, and the people would be interested. It's not the question of the place. Uh, Gail was saying, you know, if it were taking place on Mars, maybe it wouldn't be a problem for the for the French directors, uh, the people who are. Who are... <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, as a question for you, um, as a intellectual, as a researcher uh, at academia and teacher, how how is the field of Caribbean um, theater performance? How Is it regarded in France, but also outside the world where you are known as an expert? How how do you see your field? Um, yeah, I must say that every time I was talking about my research on Caribbean theater, what was interesting is that um, the French, uh, even the French scholars, I must say in theater, you know, when I went to conferences, they were always very surprised that there was a Caribbean theater, you know, they were not even, they couldn't even mention one name, not even Césaire, you know. Uh, so it, there was a kind of surprise. And then, oh, is there a theater in the Caribbean? Even if we know that Martinique Guadeloupe are part of France and that Haiti was, you know, for a long time French. So there was this kind of um, suspicion, suspicion about what kind of theater is staged there. And, but I must say, when I travel to other countries, you know, to give, papers in conferences or people are more inclined to be a curiosity and a real intellectual curiosity without the prejudice of a kind of minor theater, you know, a marginal theater. Um, that's what I could, I could, you know, experience. Uh, I must say that um, if I, if I decided to do my PhD in, um, on Caribbean theater in the US, is that because I got, you know, subsidized by American universities to work on uh, Francophone Caribbean theater. I did a PhD in France where I did, I didn't receive any money at all. Uh, so um, it was, it was easier for me to get a position in American universities than in French universities. Uh, when I apply for jobs in France, I cannot apply for, um, There are several categories as uh, academic, you know, departments and uh, as working on Francophone, I'm most of the time in comparative literature, but I cannot be included in French literature, even if, you know, Martinique and Guadeloupe are French. So it, it tells you something. And all the positions in academia, there are very, very few, even if it's changing, even when I taught, you know, at the Sorbonne Nouvelle and the seminar, they, they were full. I mean, the students were really, really interested in this, um, in this kind of theater. I think it's changing that now that we have a new director in the Avignon Festival, uh, who comes from Portugal, you know, um, um, I think he has a different perspective, Thiago Rodriguez. What I can see on the new program is that The, all the political, you know, issues, all the colonial, also colonial, post-colonial issues are more are part, you know, of the of the program, the programmation of the of the next festival in July. So that will be really interesting to see, you know, um, who has like 
Daniel Francis has been invited, which is new. Guy, you, you were also part of the IN Festival. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that it will change. And yeah. I, I would like to add something. Um, yeah, I just want to point out that the, um, the experience, this long experience that we, we've had as a company with Stephanie was a very precious and meaningful because uh, we were able to, when she invited us, the different universities where she, where she worked, it was really um, a very rich experience for all the, the actors and directors to, to be surrounded by five departments that, uh, at least five departments that Stephanie were able to reun reunite uh, around the, the, the project. And uh, it was very interesting to, to see how, from different perspectives, how they they perceive the, the place we brought. And uh, yeah, so I would say that uh, Stephanie also, she, that that experience we've never lived and I think it would be even difficult uh, to, live, to, to experience it in France. Yeah, so yeah. So I just wanna say, uh, it's just a testimony to, to see how, you know, this relation of a Caribbean company in the United States then, in, in, in comparison yeah. to yeah. an additional complication is that as we had with the piece of Charlotte and Magali, <clears throat> when they <clears throat> when Princeton uh, Florent came, they don't have students who are black. They don't have students who have this experience. So how do you do a play with about you know what you that complex play that murder case what you put up you know but your own student body doesn't reflect that you know and they would be much more happy to do I guess a twentieth century French. Uh, contemporary uh, a play about middle-class uh, problems, pe people sitting around a family a table, you know, and discussing life and uh, what it means to be French or not. So they, they are, they are, it's so complex and so much is against you. My question is, there is there are nations that also are closer to a archipelagos, as Lisson said, the idea of the Creole, there's like Indonesia, um, Japan is an, nation of islands um, and perhaps China, you know, so how are, are there connections? Are you actively uh, reaching out? Because one also has a feeling that you look to France for recognition, but the love is not returned in that way, you know, but are you now also at the moment where we say we would like, uh, we connect to other places of the world who might be interested in our, our work, our culture, our place, and what we have to give to the world, because I believe the Caribbean is an important uh, a place uh, in the world, not only because of Clison and others, because but the way of uh, living is something we all can learn something from. The well, I just would like to say um, the, the experience that we had with Le Sac de Lita, which was co produced by Eddie Comper, the Centre Cultural Sonis, and KR's Korean National University of Arts. What we experience is that actually we have more things in common with Korea than with France, because it's the, the relation with the ancestors, the drums, the, the, the storytelling. And so actually, <laughs> and I remember it in, in um, when we, because we presented this play in, in Avignon and the media, what, one of the questions that often came out is to, to, to because the co, the, there was a co-director, Korean co-director, and they they asked him, well, with whom you have more things in common, with France or with Guadeloupe? Well, definitely with Guadeloupe, with all you know, for all the reasons that I just uh, explained. But uh, um, I, I want to just um, go into to talking about uh, what uh, Elvia said. But for me today, is necessary to have different point of view, different uh, point to see. Um, the Caribbean is big. Uh, when you're talking about Cuba, uh, Trinidad, Jamaica, uh, Republic, Republica Dominicana, so Puerto Rico, so, so uh, we have many plenty islands. And uh, we have a uh, uh, um, biggest market we, we touch, we start to touching now Africa. The French Africa, the English African, the Portuguese African, and um, uh, Europe, uh, even uh, Belgium, Germany. So mm -hmm. 
we have we have some writers, some plays who can um, interesting the world. We don't we don't play we don't do theater writing theater for only for Caribbean people. We have story, uh, universe story. So uh, so we had we, we 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 it's necessary to talk to the world and the world receive what what I give us and. Uh, we can learn for the world and the, the world can learn for us. Uh, that's why we love uh, to continue acts in, uh, in take place in Guadeloupe and in the Caribbean because it's a bridge. We need to build bridge over all the world because when we see how the world is changing is uh, in a trouble, arts, Theater, music, and uh, on, on the one can give the peace the world need now, and we, I think, the Caribbean have to talk and have something to say to the world uh, about about this point of view. So um, the bridge is, is important. We are small islands, but big mind. That I want to say. Yeah, so we're coming closer to the end uh, of our discussion. Anything anybody still wants to say or to add? Est-ce que quelqu'un veut est-ce que quelqu'un veut ajouter quelque chose? La question de de Franck aussi, c'était qu'est-ce que vous avez à offrir aujourd'hui au monde qui soit pas simplement dans une relation à la France, mais dans un monde ouvert de la conception vicentienne du tout monde. Voilà, il y a d'autres archipels dans le monde, comment vous pouvez vous relier au monde et qu'est-ce que vous avez aujourd'hui à dire à dire au monde? En, en ce qui me concerne, moi, je, 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 non, je vais parler anglais. <laughs> I'm very interesting in 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 talking to the the, the entire world, and uh, and we have uh, we we are building bridges, uh, as you said, uh, between uh, our small islands and the rest of the world, and uh, our plays are. Uh, read or performed in other countries and of course the the French um, system in which we are but it's not our choice uh, makes that it's it's not easy for us to travel in in other places easily without uh, having a a, 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 a a stop in Paris for example we can we, we don't have direct lines between our islands and the rest of the world, but we, we would like to, we would, we would like to travel more and to, to be in, and especially in the Caribbean, uh, personally, I have a big frustration of, of this Caribbean, you know, because I would like to be more connected and, and, and translations like this, this, um, this book of, uh, of our plays translated in English. It's very, very important. Translation is very important for us because we are part of a multilingual, uh, multilinguistic, I don't know how to say this, but uh, 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 we are really Caribbean people. And, and the Caribbean is, is, a, is a place where people speak a lot of languages and it's important for us to, to, be, to be read in those languages. So it's, it, it's a very important beginning, this translation in English, for example, for, for me, yes. Yeah. Moi, moi, je me méfie de, de, du mot, euh, enfin, je l'ai entendu plusieurs fois, euh, universel ou, ou, ou le monde, parce que je me je pose tout simplement la question de est-ce que notre grand ami Shakespeare se disait euh, que j'écris pour le monde quand il faisait ses pièces Est-ce que ces pièces ne sont pas jouées dans le monde entier aujourd'hui Ça traitait de la violence du pouvoir euh, du lieu où je suis, j'écris sur, euh, quand j'écris sur la migration, j'écris de mon lieu, des problèmes que je, que je vois, euh, ma famille qui est dispatchée un peu partout, mais en même temps, ça parle, ça parle aux humains. Je, 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 je me méfie de, de certains mots, je ne vais pas là-dedans parce que je sais très bien qu'il y a eu plein, 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 plein d'exemples avant moi. Et, euh, Je pense que Molière est joué un peu partout dans le monde et, et non plus, lui non plus, il ne s'est pas posé la question. 
c'est ce que je, je, je retiens de, de mon lieu de, de caribéen. J'écris, j'écris sur... Je peux écrire sur ma rue, je peux écrire sur ma mère, je peux écrire sur mon père. Et j'ai l'impression que je parle avec le monde entier en écrivant ça, en fait. Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Et, um, so, he just said that he's a little bit suspicious about the concept of universalism, about writing for the world, He said that, well, when Shakespeare wrote, he didn't really, he wasn't expecting to talk, you know, to the whole world. He wrote his plays and his plays are now, they talk about power, about domination, about violence, and they are still staged and read today. And Molière is the same, you know. So this, um, um, how do you say, objective, this uh, goal, to reach the world may not be, you know, the, the best one. He said, well, I'm, I'm talking from where I am. You know, it can be Haiti. I'm talking, I can write about my mother, about my father. But when I do that, I, I connect, you know, to the world without having to um, yeah. talk about universal topics or issues. Well, often a locality is the universality, it's combined, and then it was interesting. We have something so this is very specific and very local, but also global and universal. Um, we are coming to the end. It's one of our longer talks. Again, let's thank you all for participating, and Stephanie for being the editor of the book, uh, um, The New Place from the Caribbean. So I encourage everyone really to, uh, to look at it, and many other plays are there. It's just a short a selection and we will um, continue the project. One of the ideas we have in October, there will be readings of excerpts uh, of the plays in here with Eddie at the festival here um, uh, in, uh, in Guadeloupe and the Siage company will help us to put together. We are thinking about uh, creating perhaps a pan Caribbean festival, 14, 15 nations, you know, All together, this place, we cannot invite uh, theater companies, which we should, but money isn't there. But we could perhaps create a, a, a festival, you know, with plays from Cuba and Jamaica and Martinique and Haiti to say this is a, you know, a region of the world we should listen to. And if we get this done, I'm happy to invite all these plays to come to New York and we do a, a, a real Caribbean uh, reading festival also in, in New York that combines the English and French and and Portuguese speaking uh, countries. Uh, uh, there's someone, Akiba in, uh, in, um, in Boston at Emerson College who heard about our project, listened to the podcast and saw the uh, readings and she created a, a 10 part series in response to uh, the French speaking um, Caribbean place. She, she did it for the English speaking uh, uh, countries. So it's already a big uh, thing that happened that came out of it. So, um, So let's see what we can do to also foster playwriting, have a new generation of writers writing workshops. Maybe you all can help us um, to do something to foster that energy and the creation. And theater in itself represents life. It represents the creative forces, it, what it means to feel alive, to be life. It's the closest we can, uh, we can be, I think, to the experience of, of, of being human. And uh, so this is very important to hear from this very unique uh, place um, in the world and the Siegel Center. We are very fortunate and honored to have stumbled into this. And um, it's an important lessons we have to learn and important stories we need to know about. And there has to be a representation on the stages of the world. Everyone, especially also in New York City, where such a large Caribbean community and we don't hear them, we don't see it. And it is really wrong and we have to change it and we have to be part Of the change. So thank you all and uh, get the book. We're going to continue on Friday. We're going to talk about the play, the history of Black, uh, 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 the history of the Black people by Edouard Glisson, a project uh, that um, we will talk about. Eddie is presenting the work uh, here. Uh, we're going to have a talk with Florian Maltzacker from Berlin. He wrote about uh, a new way to think about theater after the post dramatic um, book from Hans Thies Lehmann, perhaps an update on how to think about truly contemporary theater. He's a, um, a great curator. And, and then uh, next week we will hear from playwrights from the Ukraine and directors is the project that takes place in Boston and on, in New York and to see how uh, theater artists react to a global crisis and, and how to, can we make theater in the face of war and the face of violence and where's the place and what stories come out of a place like the Ukraine. So thank you all for listening. 
And it was a big, uh, big group today, but it was really worth it. It was an important discussion. Thank you all for being so patient to listen in to all our viewers who listen to it. You know, thank you for taking the time to listen to these voices from the Caribbean. They are important ones, and we can learn from it. It could change your life. And um, and thanks to HowlRound for hosting us, of course, Thea and uh, VJ and and everybody else involved. So thank you all. I know we could uh, talk much, much longer, but we get an idea. For the idea and I really encourage everybody to engage with this part of the world and it's an important one and like in music we listen to world music we listen to music actually from the Caribbean but you have to do the same in theater especially if you work in theater and you listen to this find a way to incorporate these voices in your work thank you bye-bye bye-bye thank you